All right, hello YouTube. Today, in this video, we'll be talking about how to integrate Angular Fire, the official Firebase binding for Angular projects, into your Angular projects. And to be more specific, we'll be talking about the integration process for Angular that is after the major major version 16, where you have the option to create standalone components and even standalone projects. So for the sake of demonstration, let's go to our directory where you want to start your new project from. For me, it's coding slash demo. Let's use the Angular CLI to create a new project that is standalone. New uh, fire, Angular Fire Demo and use the standalone flag. And it's going to walk you through the process of setting up. Now that the CLI has done setting up our projects, let's go and take a look. Uh, it was Angular, okay. And let's open the directory, open up the folder in our IDE. And it's interesting that with the ng new command, it creates a .vs code folder for you automatically. I didn't know that. However, like we have mentioned before in the NG Access integration video, which I'll be linking as an interactive card on the um, right hand corner, if we take a look at the project directory, there is no app.module.ts. This is because we use the standalone flag to instruct the CLI that this project is going to be standalone. So anything that goes into the traditional app.modules.ts file will be migrated into this app.config.ts. And later in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to add all the necessary dependencies in this providers array that is related to Angular Fire. And let's go to the Firebase console to create a demo Firebase project for this video. So we're gonna do Angular Fire demo. Okay, whatever, this doesn't matter because I'll be tearing this project down after this video. Google Analytics is not necessary at the moment. Okay, so our new project is ready. And in this window, we can go take a look at the application creation screen and we would need to create a new app and instruct the console to let it know that this is going to be a web app. Let's call it Angular Fire Integration Web. We wouldn't be needing the hosting service, so we just register the app. And it has generated this app config file for us. And essentially, the Firebase config is the thing that we'll be needing later to configure our project. But for now, let's go back to our terminal. And if you take a look at the documentation, it's asking us to use npm install and install the Firebase package into your local project. However, as a developer, I would recommend you to install the Firebase tools package. And if we take a look at my local setup, you can see that I already have the Firebase-tools installed on my local machine. So inside of my project, I can just do uh, Firebase init. And if you haven't logged into your Firebase CLI tool yet, you might need to do Firebase login to log in with your Google credential. As you can see, I've already logged in to my Firebase tool. So inside of my project folder, I can just do Firebase init. And it's going to ask us a bunch of questions for the setup. And for this project, we're going to use Firestore, uh, Cloud Functions, Storage, Emulators. Yeah, I think those are the services that we'll be needing. So we can press Enter to continue. And we have just created this Angular Fire demo project. So we're going to select use an existing project 
and because we have logged in with our Google account, it pulls all the available projects from our Firebase console. And inside of this interface, we're going to select Angular Fire Demo app that we have created. Okay, so this is one of the things that you need to watch out for. So all the services that you would like to configure in your local project, for example, the local cloud Firestore, you would first enable it in the in your Firebase console. And we're going to select the test mode and select the region that is close to where we are. So we have enabled Cloud Firestore. Let's also go ahead and enable storage. I believe these are the services that you will need to enable from your Firebase console in order for it to be available in your local project setup. Okay, so now that we have enabled those two services, let's go back to our terminal and retry the Firebase init. Again, we're going to be using storage, cloud Firestore, cloud functions, and most importantly, emulators, so we can test our Firebase setup on our local machine instead of doing everything on production. Choose an existing project, same demo project, and for the setup, I tend to just use the default options. So using the firestore.rules sounds good to me. Using the firestore.indexes.json sounds good to me. We'll be using TypeScript for our cloud functions. Sure, I want to catch bugs using ESLint before deploying. Sure, install the dependencies now. We'll be using storage.rules for the Firebase storage security rules and we'll be needing authentication emulator, Firestore, and storage. That should be enough. Port 8080 for Firestore, 9199 for storage. Would you like, to, yes, I want the emulator's UI. The port can be whatever, whichever port is available. I want to download the emulators and the setup is complete. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start integrating Angular Fire into our local project. And to do that, we're going to be using the Angular command line interface and do ng add at angular slash fire. Okay, so the Angular Fire dependencies has been installed. And it's asking us what features would you like to set up. You may think that this interface, this process looks very similar with Firebase and Knit, and you would be correct. However, because like we have already talked about, after the release of the major version 16 of Angular projects, there's no app.modules.ts file. So even though we're doing some duplicated work that we have already done with the Firebase init command. If we go through the same process, the same setup, and select the services that we would like to use in our new project, uh, storage, maybe not hosting, you're going to see that at a certain point, okay, we log in with our Google account, select the project, and select the web app that we have created. You can see that because there is no app.module.ts file, this whole process is going to fail. So, so for us to successfully set up Firebase, we would for now we would still have to use the Firebase init command. I hope one day in the future the Angular Fire team is going to fix this part and accommodate uh, pro Angular projects that are standalone. But for now. Uh, we can still use the Firebase and it to do everything. And we can just bridge any gap, any missing file we can just create. Because at the end of the day, the CLI is just doing some, uh, generating some scaffolding code to for our convenience. So after we have introduced Angular Fire as a dependency to our project, let's go to the text editor. and integrate 
the um, Anglifier into our project. And as you can see, these are all the newly added files that are specific to Firebase. And now we're going to rely on the official documentation of Angular Fire a little bit. Uh, let's, how can we do this? Let's do it like this. Yep. If we take a look at the code example, it's essentially telling us to inject the Firebase related providers into the app.ts.module. But I hate to repeat myself, in standalone Angular projects, this file doesn't exist. Instead, we would need to inject all the providers into the app, sorry, into the app.config.ts file. So from here, and inside of this providers array, we would need to use the Angular provider function to bundle all the providers from third-party libraries together and the name of the function is import providers from and inside of this function call we can essentially do whatever the official documentation is asking us to do so we're going to do provide firebase app and take advantage of webstorm's importation import prompts and inside of the provide firebase app we're going to use an error function and return initialize app and inside of the initialize app function call, what we need to pass in as an argument is the Firebase config object that, that we have generated from the Angular Fire demo project. So to make it more clear, if we go to the root of this project and click on the gear icon, we can see the Firebase config object down here. And this thing is 100% safe to be used on your client side. You don't need to worry about security. And how I would set it up is inside of the SRC folder, I would create a file called firebase.config.ts, open it up, and just paste the entire config object here, and export it so it's accessible to other files, and just pass it in here. Firebase config. And the next thing we're going to do, let's also inject the provider for Firestore. Going back to the official documentation, and we're going to do provide Firestore, do an error function, and have it return get Firestore. And just to demonstrate to you, how structured and similar the APIs are. Let's also inject the Firebase storage provider. So we're going to do provide storage error function get storage. And that's essentially how you would inject the providers for Firebase related service to your app's root. And just to show you guys that everything is in working order, let's quickly write a record into our Firestore database. So if we go to the app.component.ts, let's add some record real quick into our database when this component init's. So let's do all init and create the function. and create, also create a constructor for this class. And inside of the constructor, this is where we would inject the Firestore dependency into this class. So we're gonna do store Firestore because sometimes we will want to use the ng-access uh, state management library as part of our dependencies. And there might be some namespace clashing if you use store to refer to both of the ng access state store and the fire store so for the sake of clarity let's call it fire store and it's going to be of the type fire store which is imported from angular slash fire slash fire store 
and inside of the ngi init method we're going to do this dot firestore um, let's first create a pointer to a collection we can call it test collection equals to yep no how we would do it is we would use the collection function imported from angular slash fire also slash firestore and give it a okay the first argument is going to be the firestore dependency so this dot firestore and the second argument is the name of the collection we're going to call it test and if this collection doesn't exist when we're adding document to it it'll be automatically created so we have already created our collection and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the add doc function imported from the same module and the first argument is going to be the test collection pointer that we have created and for the data let's say we want to insert a text saying i love firebase and now let's go ahead and take a look at our security rule to make sure that it can be successfully written to our database. So we'll go to Firestore database and take a look at the rules. And because we created this Firestore in the testing mode, as long as the records are being added before August 19th, it's going to be successfully written to the database. So let's go ahead and ng serve our application while paying attention to our database and ideally once the application has been successfully started and served if we go to the application and refresh the page you can see that the record has been written to our database because we hard coded for this record for this document to be written in the on init function call of the default app component so this is it guys this is how you would introduce the firebase and angular fire libraries as dependencies into your angular project i think in the next video i would like to show you guys how to set up local emulator so you can run your firebase locally without doing everything on the production environment so see you guys in the next video bye